<laughs> what is up you guys it's your girl unique the iconic we are back here with another video this video is going to be more of a client video shout out to my model laswa me and her been friends for a good minute now i think it's going on maybe two years so i'm starting off with her brows using the anastasia beverly hills dip brow pomade in the shade soft brown i like my brows to tend to be a bit lighter um than the client's hair that i'm doing i just kind of like that light brow effect and when i do the brows i don't fill the brows in um, all the way on the inside i tend to just kind of leave that part I'm a bit more open so it looks more realistic and then I just go and use the angle brush to just make these hair like strokes in the front. After that, I'm going to use the P. Louise Rumor Base in the shade 4. I'm going to use that to kind of carve out her eyebrows, just only um, under her eyebrows and not at the top. This is going to help me have an even and consistent base for when I do my eyeshadow. Now, when I do like the front of the brow, I tend to not drag as much product because I don't want to mess up the shape that I'm already, I already made with the um, brow pomade. So I tend to just drag as little product as I can, then I'll go in and I'll just kind of use whatever product is left on my brush to carve out the front and just kind of drag the rest of the product down to the base of the eye. So now I'm going to go ahead and just blend out that P. Louise base and I'm going to blend it down to the base of the eye so we can go ahead and get ready to start on our eyeshadow. Now I'm still going to go back in with that Rumor 4 again to just use this as the base. I'm using a good amount of it. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's not too thick, but it's definitely like a good amount to where my eyeshadow definitely has something to lay on. And also it kind of makes it easier for me to blend out the shadow that I'm going to be using. So now I'm using the Morphe 35B eyeshadow palette. I'm using that dark navy blue and I'm mixing just a little bit of black eyeshadow from that palette to kind of give me that really dark navy blue eyeshadow. Um, I will say when you're, whenever you're mixing black with any eyeshadow, just make sure you just like do like one little dab of the black because black is such a strong eyeshadow color and you don't want it to overtake the main color that you're focusing on. So definitely just do a little dab and keep mixing in with the main color that you're trying to use. So I'm kind of using this, um, I guess you would say like a buffing brush just to place the eyeshadow. I am packing on a lot of color because I don't want my shadow to look too light i definitely do want the color to be noticeable especially when i put the glitter on it's just really going to make the glitter pop and make the whole eye pop so definitely do pack on the color and after you've done that definitely just start at the top where you see the lines just kind of buff it out a little bit but not too much because you don't want shadow to get all over the place this is going to help us start the transition um at the top Now, when you are buffing out the edges of the eyeshadow, you should not be adding on any more product. Like I said, this does help prevent from having your eyeshadow all over the place. 
So now I'm going to use like this little fluffy, fluffy brush. Um, you can use like the Morphe fluffy brushes. This one I think is from Real Techniques. And I'm going to go in with that same navy blue, but I'm going to use that light blue that is inside of that shadow palette. It's like that aqua color. And I'm using those two together to just buff out the air edges um, around the um, eyeshadow. I use a bit of a lighter color because I didn't want the um, black and the navy blue to just be too overpowering. I still wanted to have a little bit of more color involved. And I'm just doing small circles, y'all, because like I said, you don't want this shadow to go all over the place. So just take your time whenever you're doing this. And, you know, definitely perfect this and blend, 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 blend until you have that perfect consistency or that perfect color that you were looking for. Now I'm using the BH Cosmetics Take Me um, a, a Festival Weekend Festival or Festival Weekend. I cannot remember it, but it's like this really light um, kind of bluish teal color. I'm just putting that in the inner corner and kind of blending it in with that navy blue and that um, black. And I'm using the Wet n Wild eyeliner. I recently came across this eyeliner, you guys, and I really do like it. You know, for it to be so cheap, it is so bomb. And like a little goes such a long way. I'm not going to say that it's better than NYX, but it is definitely up there with them as far as you're getting um, more for less. Now I'm using the Duo Lash um, Glue. This is the clear one. I think this is the one that has like the green letters on it. I'm using this because the glitter sticks way better with the Duo Eyelash Glue instead of using like glitter glue. Glitter glue does tend to oil up sometimes and I hate that because it starts creasing the glitter. Now this glitter is some glitter I got off like Amazon and I mixed it with some glitter I got off um, Bulk Glitter. I believe that's what it's called. No, Super Glitter. I think that's what it's called. I'll put it in the um, description box, but I do think they're called like super glitter or something like that. But yeah, I got like these um, holographic eyeshadows and I just kind of mix them together with the blue um, glitter that I got from them. Now I'm going back in with the P. Louise base. I'm going to put that all just underneath her eye. I'm going to go ahead and use this as a base to blend out, you know, her under eyes so they can pop out really well. The reason why I wanted to use a wet base is because the colors show way better than they do underneath like a dry eye and also it just it just sets better because it's harder to blend when the under eye is kind of dry and y'all excuse la Soie, she is a whole fool y'all she is just hilarious <laughs> but um like i said now i'm just gonna go ahead and use this like mini smudger brush and i'm just kind of uh tapping on the color underneath her eye and then i'm going to go in with some gel eyeliner this is the one from l'oreal it's so good you guys and it it really does last i have not seen it run um, on anyone that i've used well or when i've used it on myself but i've had no complaints after putting on that eyeliner we're just going to go ahead and smudge it out some more um just to kind of deepen up that under eye to make it really pop and you'll notice a difference um after i'm done blending now I'm going to go ahead and use the um, Fit Me Foundation from Maybelline. This is in the shade 340 and I also use the um, Maybelline, uh, I forgot what it's called. Like It's like the full coverage one with like the white top. I forgot y'all, that's a shame. Man, everything will be in the description box. Y'all already know this. But I mixed this um, 340 Fit Me Foundation, the matte one with the um, warm sun shade in the... Uh, foundation the full coverage one that has like the white top now when i do foundation i don't like to spread it i like to pat it in i feel like it just is so much better when you pat it in versus swiping because sometimes you can get streaks if you're not really knowing how to blend in the foundation well like i said you just tapping it and y'all know i'm not beating up her face i know it looks like i'm like going ham on her but <laughs> i'm not y'all i promise y'all it's just the way it looks on camera but yeah definitely just go ahead and tap it in this will help the product spread better but on a more even scale so everything just looks flawless now i'm going to go ahead in with the um, la girl pro concealer in the shade natural 
I'm using this under her eye and I'm very careful to not get any of that concealer under the shadow or on the shadow that we just put under her eye. So do be careful about that because you don't want to do that because it could truly mess up just the whole under eye. You may have to do some more blending. Now I'm taking my Real Techniques um, setting brush. Of course, you guys, I love this brush for blending out concealers. It blends out so beautifully. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And what you'll notice is that, I, once again, I am tapping in the product and doing small circular motions, but still putting that pressure to tap it in. When I go under the eye, I become very careful underneath it, just where the shadow is, just to make sure it just kind of blends in seamlessly. And the reason why I did the shadow first is because like I said, you guys, the color pops out way more, but just take your time when you're going underneath that. I would advise that you just tell your client to look up so they can avoid the concealer smearing in with the eyeshadow and also to avoid creasing. And if you do tend to get some of the um, concealer onto the shadow, all you have to do is just go back in with the brush and kind of blend it out. Um, you can, but I just say just be careful so you don't have to worry about that because, like I said, you don't want the shadow to kind of get mixed in with the concealer. And y'all know how that goes. The color of your concealer may be blue or something or black, whatever. But yeah, just be careful when you're going underneath the eye. Like, see how she's on her phone? Like, let's swap. <laughs> Let me beat your face, girl. <laughs> now, I'm going to go ahead and just set underneath her eye using the Sasha Buttercup Light. I am putting some of that setting powder under her eye, well, over the eyeshadow as well. Because even though we did um, be careful, even though we were careful with the concealer, the under eye is still kind of bit, a bit wet from when we put the P. Louise base on. We just want to go ahead and just set everything so we don't have to worry about that shadow smearing at all. Now I'm going to be using the Black Opal Foundation Sticks. Y'all know I love these sticks, especially for contouring. I'm going to go ahead and use the shade Karab and the shade Nutmeg to give her a contour. So I put Karab and Nutmeg on her cheeks and I put the Nutmeg on her nose. And once again, you guys, we're just tapping. Like I said, you have to tap the product in. You don't want to a smear or rub it around the place because it's just not going to blend right. Now I'm taking my e.l.f. contour brush to blend out her nose, up and down motions. And I'm also kind of going a little bit over the tip of her nose just to prevent her nose from looking too long. And then I'm going to buff that same um, contour into her eyebrow to just kind of give her that faded eyebrow look. Well, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't say that it's faded. I would say it's just more so it looks more natural because, y'all, I don't like when the concealer line is showing on the makeup. Like, I cannot stand that. I cannot stand that concealer line. And I just went ahead and used the same setting powder to kind of carve out her contour to make it pop a bit more. And I'm using these lashes that I got from the Beauty Supply Store. These are like the 25 millimeter ones. I got them for like $2.99, I believe. And I don't think they're real mink. I think they're some type of fiber i don't know but they are so bomb y'all like they're really really nice like y'all really need to go and try these out if y'all can get it from a beauty supply store i'm pretty sure y'all can order them online i'll see if i can find it and if i do i'll definitely put it in that description box now i'm just using my elf blush brush this is this is for blush but i like to use it to set the dust off powder and i'm using that just to kind of get rid of all the powder on her face now I'm using my all-time favorite highlighter, you guys, Champagne Pop. I absolutely love this highlighter. Like, I love all of Becca's highlighters. The way they just go onto the skin, it's like this buttery, smooth color, and it's so easy to blend. Champagne Pop can be a universal color as long as you know how to use it well. And I do advise if you're more on the darker tones that you kind of mix it in with one of your favorite, your favorite, um, 
highlighters and your face will just like it, it just does something to like look at her face like y'all see the difference like look come on that's why yes since you already know but the face it, it just does so much to the face Now I'm just going to go in with the NYX um, Cappuccino. This is the lip liner. Um, I'm not sure if it's part of the Suede collection. I think it's just a regular lip liner. It's Cappuccino and I'm going to use that to just line out her lips. I'm definitely a big fan of like overlining just a little bit because I love like that pouty fullness lip. I just think it looks so good, especially with this look since it's very dramatic. I definitely do love it. We just want to have it stick out more. And I'm always been a fan of neutral lips. So I'm always going to have like that neutral nude lip color. And of course, you cannot go wrong without topping it off with a gloss. I love lip gloss. And I'm going to use the Dose of Colors lipstick in the shade Sand. And I'm going to use the NYX um, lip gloss in the shade Fortune Cookie. Well, other than that, you guys, this is kind of summing up how I achieved this beautiful prom party, I mean, birthday party, going out, whatever you're going to do to, you know, shine out at the night. Honey, this is the look for you. Thank y'all so much for watching this video, and definitely please like, comment, and subscribe. Mwah! <laughs>